Thank you for the opportunity to present. I'm going to be talking about reversing ileostomies and colostomies, specifically in the setting of Crohn's disease. And what are the things you need to specifically think about when reversing a stoma in the setting of Crohn's? So the four major points I'm going to talk about today are anatomy of the stoma, assessment for any ongoing proximal disease activity in the setting of Crohn's, thinking about your distal disease and distal landing zone if you're making a new anastomosis, and then optimization of medical therapies. I mean, that's very important to our Crohn's patients. So when we think about the anatomy of the ostomy, this is important because when you think about reversing the stoma, you need to understand what's your operative approach. If it's a loop ileostomy, you may be able to reverse the ileostomy at the stoma site. And it may be that you do a hand-sewn uh, connection of the loop ileostomy, or you may be someone that prefers to staple the loop ileostomy reversal. And you may use a linear 80 GIA stapler and reverse the stoma. If that's the case, again, the anatomy is important because you want to understand the distance that you have from the loop ileostomy to a distal structure, meaning if the loop ileostomy was made right next to the ileocecal valve, or right next to an anastomosis, a stapled approach may not be the best option. So it's under, important to understand the anatomy of the stoma and what is right next to it. An end ileostomy or end colostomy or a loop end may require a midline incision because it may be that you're going back and you're reconnecting the ileostomy to a Hartman's or a colostomy to a Hartman's. And so that loop end becomes very important because it may, from the surface, look like a loop ileostomy. You may see double barrel, but it may be that it's a loop end. So it's important to obtain prior operative reports if you weren't the surgeon doing the case. Reread the operative reports if you were the surgeon doing the case and really understand the anatomy of the stoma prior to doing an ostomy reversal because it really factors in, again, whether you're going to do a hand-sewn versus a stapled, really understanding where that ileostomy is in relation to any distal structures, and then understanding if you're going to be reconnecting a colostomy to a Hartman stump or a structure distally, understanding the anatomy of that distal structure, the height of the Hartman stump, is it a reoperative pelvis? So really gain an idea of the anatomy prior to going in and restoring intestinal continuity. Specific to Crohn's disease, you want to think about, is there any ongoing disease activity? And this is important both proximally and distally. So when we think about assessing ongoing disease activity proximally, in Crohn's disease, we typically obtain enterography. So either a CT enterography or MR enterography. And this is important because we want to understand, is there additional surgery that's needed? A patient may be having some obstructive-like symptoms and it may be mistaken for a hernia at the stoma site, and perhaps there's actually upstream stenosis. So we need to understand in the setting of Crohn's disease, what is the disease activity in the intestine proximal? And that may need to be addressed at the time of the stoma reversal. Or if there's a stricture just proximal to the stoma site, we'd certainly want to know that so we could address that at the time of the stoma reversal. So again, enterography or cross-sectional imaging if this has not been done in the recent past. The other thing is thinking about what is the disease activity or what is the anatomy distal to the stoma? So in the setting of a loop ileostomy, if there's an anastomosis distal to that and that stoma was made to protect that anastomosis, it's important to obtain imaging to understand, is there a leak? Is there stenosis? What does that anastomosis look like before you go and restore intestinal continuity through that anastomosis? Oftentimes, we'll obtain a gastrographic enema from below. That's what we most often do in the setting of a distal anastomosis to really understand that connection prior to reversal of a stoma. It's also very important in Crohn's disease. If you're going to reverse an end ileostomy or an end colostomy, what are you attaching to? If there's remaining colon or there's remaining rectum, is there inflammation present? Because when you do that anastomosis and reconnect things, you want to understand, are you sewing or are you stapling? Or are you connecting to healthy bowel? 
If you're not, you're going to be a much higher risk potentially of having an anastomotic leak or having problems at that anastomotic site. So you really need to get an assessment of that distal landing zone. And this is typically done with endoscopy. We like to see, is there ulceration? Is there narrowing? What is the disease activity? Take a few biopsies prior to reversal of a stoma and restoration of intestinal continuity. Specific to Crohn's disease, also it's very understand, um, important to understand any ongoing perianal disease activity or a history of perianal activity. So sometimes we will create a stoma just to treat perianal fistulizing disease. Perianal, anovaginal, rectovaginal, a patient's had a history of perianal involvement and they have a stoma, perhaps they symptomatically feel much better. They may say they don't have any drainage. If in the case of significant perianal disease in the past, it's good to do a physical exam, but you may also want to consider doing a pelvic MRI to understand are those fistulas still present? Because when you restore intestinal continuity, we know that the disease often comes back or there's disease that is still there that becomes symptomatic. So you wanna appropriately counsel the patient that they're at risk for recurrence or you know, there still seems to be evidence of perianal fistulizing disease on the MRI. It may be that you become symptomatic when we restore intestinal continuity. So it's really under, important to understand perianal involvement that is specific to Crohn's disease. Similarly, Crohn's patients can have anal canal involvement, and it may be minor. They just have some anal canal inflammation. They may have stenosis. They may have fissuring disease. All of this may be controlled by the patient as a stoma, but then upon restoration of intestinal continuity, it may be that those symptoms come back. And it's important to understand the symptoms prior to their stoma formation and also assess what is the disease activity prior to reversing that stoma. So on clinical exam, do they have stenosis? Look for fissuring. If it looks significant, take them to the operating room and do an exam under anesthesia. See if you can get the fissuring under better control. See what the degree of the stenosis in the anal canal is. It may be appropriate to try to treat that prior to your stoma reversal. So it's good to have an idea before reversing a stoma in Crohn's Again, what is that distal disease activity? Even if a patient doesn't have a history of that, you should look for that on physical exam. The last thing is really optimization of ongoing disease activity. So if patients are on steroids, we want to try to wean them off steroids prior to stoma reversal. The other thing that's important is if a patient has ongoing disease activity, meaning luminal involvement, some ulceration, proximal involvement, proctitis, you want to understand, are they medically optimized prior to undergoing stoma reversal? Maybe you need to check biologic drug levels, antibody levels. It's important to know what is the disease activity, but then can we do something prior to stoma reversal to better optimize that? And if we're going to change the medical regimen, perhaps it's better to do that prior to reversing the stoma so they can be on stable medical therapy going into the stoma reversal surgery and then post stoma reversal. So really working with the gastroenterologist to understand optimal medical management in the Crohn's patients is very important prior to any stoma reversal. So in conclusion, reversing ileostomies and colostomies issues specific to Crohn's disease are always understanding the anatomy of the stoma prior to any closure, is this gonna be approached with a local stoma revision versus needing a midline incision? Undergoing ongoing disease activity to know if it's an appropriate time for stoma reversal. Is there proximal disease that needs to be addressed at the same time? Is there distal involvement where perhaps making an anastomosis is not appropriate? Understanding that distal landing zone, is there any perianal involvement? Is there any anal canal involvement? What does the rectum look like? If there's an anastomosis, assessing that anastomosis. And then last, in conjunction with the gastroenterologist, really working together to understand the ongoing disease activity and optimizing any medical therapy. So thank you again for the opportunity, and I hope that we will all be in person for this meeting next year. Thank you.